A Boston Fire District chief accused of stealing money from the department facing a judge today. Take a look behind me. This truck plowed right into the front of this home. Firefighters have been here more than a dozen times since 2013. This is a very scary situation, but this woman says she is not backing down. Breaking news on Chelmsford. Police there are investigating reports of hazing at the high school. This was such a fun event. Our hometown guy was here earlier this evening premiering his new movie Transformers. There's plenty of action to come. Nancy Chen had the chance to talk with one of the stars of the hit series to get an inside scoop on what's ahead. Officials say whoever was flying those drones could face thousands of dollars in fines and jail time. We got about two feet of snow here in Boston and it continues to fall off and on. Here in Framingham, it's minus two with a wind chill of minus 21. Students were shocked to see this green water that looked like slime coming out of the faucets. They couldn't brush their teeth, they couldn't shower, and they were very unhappy about it. It is the perfect time of year to pick out your own pumpkin or go apple picking. And today we're going to go pick out our own apples and then make an amazing homemade apple pie. Oh, okay, wait, I can do it. Okay, I just got to get a better grip. Oh, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I told All you you're going to get messy. There you go. I heard, I heard some slurping noise there, so that was pretty good. He's bigger than I am. He's 130 pounds, but I tell you, this dog is just the sweetest thing, and we're hoping his owner will come forward tonight. So I was given the assignment today to go down the monster sled. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> What year did the Red Sox break the curse of the Bambino? Oh, that's oh, not that's nice. First of all, I don't think they've yet broken it. They broke it. Oh. Have they? Oh. <laughs> it's starting over Is again. Is that the wrong answer? <laughs> Here we are at Old School Pizzeria. We have the perfect dish if you're having a football watch party. I got my Tom Brady jersey on, so come on in. I'm going to introduce you to Chef Joe. Is there a certain technique to rolling the pizza? You just got to be mad. Whatever you're mad at, just pretend you're mad at that Take out my frustration. Take, exactly, you know? Would you hire me? Let's think about it. Okay, get back to me. All right, so you can just see the excitement here. I can't even hear myself talk, but I hope you guys can. Live from the cast and flag, in Sarah Fridge, 7 News 19. This is just a glimpse into one of Haiti's tent cities. This is beyond imagination, the living condition in the tent city. One tent that can hold one person, you might end up having nine, ten people leaving basically one up on another one. This is the river directly behind the tent city, and as you can see, it's brown, it's dirty, but this is the place where the Haitian people bathe and wash their clothes. The smell, the mud, the condition, and the promiscuity uh, going on just make life like uh, a hell. Uh, this is hell on earth. This is just one area of Port-au-Prince, and as you can see behind me, children just roam the streets everywhere you look, and most of them are orphans. In daytime, we allow those kids from the tent city to come and play with other kids, and sometimes we feed them, we let them play soccer, but when it comes time, they go back to the tent city. Jameson, his family was here, and he still stays here, um, along with a couple other kids that hang out at Go Haiti's property. So he'll sleep here at night, just wherever? He, he'll sleep here, or there's also a, a little town back here. This area used to be another tent city in Port-au-Prince. There are many, but this one was destroyed by fire in January. Some believe it was done on purpose. We would like one day to build a very nice dorm where we can welcome those kids, give them an education, because most of them, at least 75 to 80 percent of the kids inside of the tent city, those are kids that need help right now, urgently. A large number are orphaned. And they don't even know if they are orphaned because some of them are still in the expectation that one of these days my parents will come back. In Haiti, every week, hundreds of orphans are abandoned on the street shortly after birth. Little baby Marvin here was found abandoned on the street, and the Generations of Hope Orphanage said they would take him in. I believe that mothers love their kids, but when they cannot feed them, they are sick with malnutrition, they are dying with infection, and they have an orphanage that can help them, give them an education. You know, they just take a chance. Growing up as an orphan, Dr. Franco had a sponsor mother, helping to pay for his education. 
And he says that's exactly what these kids need, someone to give them hope for the future. Ryan Westmoreland epitomized everything that you look for in a baseball player. He could hit, he could throw, and he loved the game. Playing Major League Baseball is my lifelong dream. But at the age of 22, he's now retired from baseball. Being a top prospect, you know, feeling great, and, you know, really excited about my future, and to all of a sudden not being able to even walk. It was difficult to look in the mirror and say, you know, why did this happen to me? The Boston Red Sox select Ryan Westmoreland. Yeah! Ryan was drafted by the Red Sox in 2008 and received a $2 million signing bonus. He played in the minors, dreaming of one day playing at Fenway Park. But during spring training two years later, something wasn't right. There was one day that I said to our training staff, you know, I kind of feel tingling in my hand. A couple days later, I went out to stretch and pretty much my whole right side of my body was numb. Doctors found a tangle of blood vessels in his brain. If it started bleeding, his life would be on the line. Ryan, tell me the moment that you found out that you were going to have to have surgery. I woke up completely deaf in one ear, blind, couldn't see, couldn't think, couldn't do anything. Both he and his family knew the surgery would be risky. He could be paralyzed, he could go into a coma, or, or we could lose him. Following surgery, one side of Ryan's face was frozen. He could barely move. But one thing that hadn't changed was his heart and determination. The very next day, Ryan got out of his hospital bed and walked. It was just amazing to see that. After two years of rehabbing, Ryan was finally playing again. Once I did that, I kind of said, OK, this isn't impossible. You know, I can see now that it paid off and it can only get better. But it didn't. It got worse. In July of 2012, Ryan had a second surgery. I can't even explain how painful it was to, to our family. So at the start of a new season, Ryan is retiring before his big league career even got a chance to take off. And through all of this, Ryan says his mental toughness has truly been tested. Tell me where you see yourself in 10 years. I don't know where I see myself. I just know that no matter what I'm doing, I'm going to be happy. He's just inspired a lot of people, and, and myself as his father, I, I'm the proudest guy in the world and has nothing to do with baseball. Ryan wants to go to college now and study business management. He hopes to work in baseball in the future and keep inspiring others with his story. If you'd like to see my full interview with Ryan, just go to our website, whdh.com. I'm Sarah French, 7 News Night Team. Kim, we're in front of the memorial on Boylston Street. Take a look behind me. It continues to grow. People continue to come out, leaving dedications, prayers, candles for the victims and those who risked their life during the marathon bombing. Tomorrow marks one week since the deadly attack on the marathon, and a memorial at the finish line continues to grow. In an effort to clear the area, crews will soon move it to Copley Square Park. But as flowers and dedications fill the streets tonight, this morning it was songs of praise. Let there be on earth. A worship service, different religions, and many different people coming together with a message of hope. Just an affirmation that we've all been through this together and we're all going to get through this together. It's a temporary place to gather, since many of their places of worship are blocked off, part of the massive crime scene federal agents continue to scour. It just helps to build community. Uh, we're the Back Bay Houses of Worship are a community anyway, and it just brings us all together. Nancy Moore volunteered at this year's marathon, and one of her good friends was injured in the blast. She's amazing, and she lost a foot. Um, she was at the marathon, finish along with her husband who just returned from a tour of duty in Afghanistan. Doug Julian and Lynn Krishy were not seriously hurt. When the first explosion went off, um, we were thrown back in our seats. But their emotional wounds are left behind. It's just the trauma of what we saw. I mean, I mean really that's the emotional part. 
Um, even though we don't have physical injuries, it's just we, you know, we have had a hard time sleeping. Senator Elizabeth Warren also made a stop at the memorial site. Yes, Boston can recover. Boston will recover. I feel like we lived in a bubble and said, you're not New York, you're tiny little sleepy Boston. Nothing happens here. And now I will never think that way again. Now, there are several memorials along the marathon route. They will all eventually be moved to Copley Square Park before a permanent memorial is built right here on Boylston. Reporting live in Boston, Sarah French, 7 News 19. It's playoff time, and since the Pats have to take their game to the next level, we're elevating this week's dish to be the MVP of your watch party. Here we are at Old School Pizzeria. We have the perfect dish if you're having a football watch party. I got my Tom Brady jersey on, so come on in. I'm going to introduce you to Chef Joe. We're here with Joe Perdoni, That's right. the owner of Old School Pizzeria. Joe, this is one of your favorite pizzas. What are we making today? We're making the Giuseppe pizza. This is uh, named after my father. Is there a certain technique to rolling the pizza? You just got to be mad. Whatever you're okay. mad at, just pretend you're mad at <laughs> that Take out my frustration. Yeah, exactly, you know? And with the Pats getting ready to toss around the football, we're going to toss up some pizza pies as well. I'm not the best at spinning it, but... I bet you're better than I am. Well, I mean... That's not hard. You just put one hand right here like this, uh -huh. and you just turn it like that, you know? Spin it and throw it up in the air. Here you go, throw it up. Hard. There you go. There you go. I'm good. <laughs> Now, this is how we do it, honey. We put it right on the peel, all right? We're going to make this on a Sunday when you're watching the Patriots when we go to the Super Bowl, right? Cover your pizza in ranch. I used to dip my pizza in ranch growing up. All right, well, then there you go. Then add fresh mozzarella. Now, you put on what you think is enough. Right? Oh, you want to well, know how much you like. I like a lot of cheese. So it all depends on how much cheese you like. Now add fresh chicken cutlets, bacon, and diced tomatoes. There's no such thing as too much topping. So we have our pizza finished, Joe, but we're going to yep. put the basil on last, right? Yeah, we will, yeah, because we don't want to burn the basil. We want the basil to have the freshness and the greenness because right. it will turn a different color. So I'm going to pick this up. Yeah, it's going to be heavy. We'll go right up top it. Just be careful. You're going to have to be a little hot. There you go, oh, honey. Yay. You got it. You got With it. Joe's help. I have a temperature here. I usually keep it around 550. They're not oh, going to do that at home. So right. if they can keep it at 350, 375, it's just going to cook a little longer. I can't wait. Yeah. When your pie is done, drizzle a little more ranch and top it off with your basil. There you go. All right, so the pizza is made. I'm with all my friends. They have to approve the pizza. So guys, let's dig in. It's messy, but it's good. Mm. Well, we put a lot of toppings on. Would you hire me? Let's think about it. Okay, get back to me. So as we near game day at Gillette, we have a perfect pizza pie for playoffs. They are trying to determine what led to the accident. Sky 7 on the scene moments ago as crews worked to flip that car back over following this accident. Police are referring all calls about the matter to the MBTA. New details on the General Motors ignition switch recall. Emails released in court show GM ordered half a million replacement switches almost two months before telling the government about the problem. According to new data from the National Poison Center, detergent pods send an average of one child a day to hospitals all across the country. In 2012 and 2013, poison control centers took more than 17,000 calls. Krista Delkamp has more on what experts say needs to be done. Time now for this week's Who Did It Better. Today, Kana is challenging Celtics player Brandon Bass in a daycare art project. A man took a deadly ride on top of a train in Connecticut. Brian McClellan was on top of the train when it lost electricity going to New York City on Thursday. A really close call for a passenger on board an Air Canada flight. This photo shows a propeller lodged between two window seats. Americans who want to enroll in health insurance through the Obamacare website, getting some early access enrollment for next year doesn't begin until November 15th. Still to come, a wild ride ends inside the second floor of a home when we come back what police say caused this crash. The snow is expected to pile up in cities and towns to the west of the city. Our weather team tracking it all. Our coverage of this holiday storm begins with Chief Meteorologist Pete Bouchard. Sarah Ryan. Today
Today, as the Missouri governor ordered more troops to Ferguson, we heard from Michael Brown's family attorney. We had out live to Ferguson, Missouri. Jay Gray was there for it all. Some of you could see up to nine inches of snow, while others, including Boston, might not see any snow at all. So that's good. Let's send it over to Chief Meteorologist Pete Bouchard, who's tracking it all. It's no different closer to the city. Drivers crawling on the expressway. Brandon Gano is out in our traffic tracker to give us a closer look at what you can expect when you hit the roads tonight. Hey, Brandon. A pap rally threatened with gun violence has been rescheduled, much to the delight of students at Lemonster High School. The rally was supposed to take place today, but was canceled after someone made threats about shooting students at the event last week. Counting calories in today's health cast, the FDA has finalized new rules that require calorie information to be clearly posted in food establishments by next year. Movie fans picking up a movie at a red box location should get ready for a price hike. The company has announced they will raise rental rates by 25% in the coming months. Topping buzz, a famous and cowardly costume auctioned off for millions, the lion costume worn by Burt Lahren in the 1939 Wizard of Oz movie has been sold for more than $3 million. A lot of money for a costume. And one of my favorite <laughs> movies, though. Much more to come in the next 90 minutes. I'm Sarah French. Now, because of a U.S. Supreme Court decision, he's getting his first chance to argue to be released. Seven's Kelly O'Hara is in Natick with the story. Officials say whoever was flying those drones could face thousands of dollars in fines and jail time. Tracking other headlines, cross country, two children are found shot dead in a home in New Jersey. Officials say a woman and a boy were also taken to the hospital in critical condition. Executives from the Japanese company at the center of the exploding airbag controversy were in Washington today. They face members of the Commerce Committee and apologize for their faulty products. Takata says it's committed to addressing all safety issues as soon as they possibly can. Well, if you can believe it, the Thanksgiving holiday is next week, right? around the corner. I thought we skipped it. I saw the Christmas decorations <laughs> yeah, out already. Yeah, sometimes that happens.